In this video, we're going to be breaking down the new Valorant agent meta, talking about the pick rates for every single agent in the game right now in pro meta, talking about what that means for your games in your ranked meta, and we're going to break down exactly what mains you should be playing and what characters you might want to avoid in this video. So make sure you watch to the end, smash that like, subscribe. But right now, the easiest way to climb to Diamond, Immortal, or even Radiant is with our brand new Get Good special that is going to allow you to get access to all the in-depth map guides, agent courses, and VOD reviews that you need to climb at a fraction of the cost. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity before it leaves to dominate the ladder so, so easily. Go check it out right now down below. Now, before we talk about the characters that are actually on this list, we have to talk about the characters that didn't even make this list because they have either close to a 0% pick rate or actually 0% pick rate. Now, if you're wondering where we're pulling all this data, this is actually stage one challenges of champion tour North America. And you got to understand that all the characters are usable in this tournament. So we get a pretty accurate understanding of the current meta at the highest level of play. Now, the three characters that have zero pick rate are really close to it. We have Phoenix, Yoru, and Omen. Now, before we talk about Phoenix and Omen, let's talk about Yoru. Remember, Yoru's changes have not gone live yet, so this is kind of irrelevant data. We don't know exactly how strong new Yoru is going to be. He looks really strong on paper, but it's unsure whether or not he's just going to be decent and ranked or if he's going to be actually good in pro play. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So I would more or less ignore his placement in this list for now. Now, talking about Phoenix and Omen, though, one of those is really surprising and one of those is not. Phoenix is massively power creep. We talked about this many times, how at the start in the beginning, he saw a lot of pro play and he was legitimately used often. But unfortunately, Phoenix has just gotten weaker and weaker while other character strengths have gotten stronger and stronger. On top of that, when people slot into specific roles and they want maxed out power level in specific things, not someone that is decent at many different things, Phoenix has fallen down the wayside. Now for ranked play, I think Phoenix could still be pretty decent. You could utilize him in a number of different ranks and get some decent value. And he's good for just filling with a team because as a duelist, you can smoke onto site. You can clear a cubby yourself. You can flash an off sight line. There's a lot you can do by yourself when you have people in your rank that don't want to do any of that. And that could be great. But when you climb up and people are doing more of their jobs or when you're playing in pro matches or high level gameplay, Phoenix just doesn't cut it in power level. And uh, that's sad, but it's just true. Now, I know that Omen gets some people mad, but you got to understand that when we have these open maps that have really long sight lines where you need a smoke that can cut the sight in half, you have a character like Viper. And when you need single targeted smokes, you really want to pick Astra way more than you want to pick someone like Omen because you got to think about all the utility involved in Astra. Effectively, the combined sum of either Astra, Viper, or a combination of the two have completely eliminated Brimstone and Omen from the pick pool. This is a sad reality, but until we see substantial nerfs to either Astra or Viper or substantial buffs to Brimstone or Omen, this is probably going to just be the sad reality where Asher and Viper are the controllers to play and Brimstone and Omen are just lagging behind in the power level perspective. Now, that being said, these characters are still fine in ranked and in the majority of ranks, you will be fine. I will say that Viper in particular is a character that on the maps that she's needed in, which I would say most of all is Breeze and Icebox, she's basically irreplaceable on a team. But on the other maps, if you're not in the highest ranks, Immortal, Radiant, and you don't feel comfortable on Astra, then just play who you want to play. You can still climb on Omen. You can still climb on Brimstone. And I wouldn't be surprised if pretty soon we see buffs to one of those two characters or nerfs to Astra. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But if you want free wins right now, just learn freaking Astra. Now, I did briefly mention Brimstone. He only has a 1% pick rate, seeing almost no pick rate. But the next character in question is actually Neon, who also has a 1% pick rate. And it doesn't look like Neon is going to be seeing substantial pro play, at least as of now. Now, some of you might be really surprised about this, but I'm not. It only seemed like the character that Neon could even contest space for would be Reyna. Reyna only has a 13% pick rate, by the way. But honestly, as far as disruption is concerned and trying to get 
a lot of value based on a really individual star player in pro play reyna's just better it's just way better and then jet does something that none of the other duels can even come close to doing i think that neon is more of a character that is really good for ranked play you can utilize that momentum to just completely outplay you know players that are not prepared for you players that are not ready for you but as far as pro play is concerned she seems like so much more of an individualistic character that doesn't have the same strengths that reyna or especially jet have or even Rays or whatever i just am not surprised that she's only at a one percent pick rate doesn't mean that she's terrible for ranked though now the next character that we actually got to talk about is breach at an 11 percent pick rate and it's kind of funny because he has almost no pick rate on any map besides fracture where he's only been played 37 times in this tournament not a lot a sample size compared to all the other maps because fracture has been played the least but in all of those matches it's a 99 percent pick rate so yeah it's pretty freaking overwhelming basically breach is a character that feels like he was made for fracture on defense you often want to push out of certain areas aggressively utilizing the flashes to take that space so that you can play for retake when enemies are trapped in rather than trapping yourself in to a point where players are coming in from multiple sides and breach works really well with that he works really well with retakes he works well with taking point his ultimate clears sites really easily and uh yeah i mean he just works so well with the geometry of the map and uh i just think he's one of those characters where if you like breach and you know how to flex to him whip him out on fracture and i think you'll get a lot of value with him now we did already mention reyna but specifically for ranked play realize that this character is still incredibly powerful and one of probably the best characters to solo carry with if you have the skill to back her up it's going to be really dependent on your individual skill as a player so basically if you want to carry with reyna you need to be top fragging in the games you're picking her because that's how you get your value by getting goddamn kills now we're actually gonna breeze through three different characters in cypher sage and raise so 15 20 and 21 percent pick rate respectively so these characters are good on specific maps i'm just gonna name them out really quickly cypher saw play on haven he saw play on split a little bit and saw a little bit of play on fracture sage saw quite a bit of play on icebox a decent amount of play on split and that was about it and then raise saw a lot of play on split bind and fracture but no play on anywhere else we're getting into situations where there's a lot of characters that are pretty map dependent or they get a lot more value on particular maps and while in ranked play you could definitely lock the same character in every single game no matter what i don't necessarily feel like that might be the best strategy because you can learn a lot from how pros play certain characters on certain maps and let's say you're a raise main for instance sure you can utilize her on every single map however there's going to be a lot more data to analyze on split bind and fracture from pro meta see what they're doing and incorporate that into your gameplay and you can utilize this to stretch out your agent pool so maybe in the future if you ever want to join a team you'll be able to actually pick whatever other character that the person that normally plays raise on those maps the split bind and fracture play on the other maps as well but at the end of the day your personal preference is going to play a huge role in what characters you're picking in your games and you can make a character work in pretty much any situation especially when you don't have the same level of consistent teamwork not even close as pro play now the next characters we got to talk about is first killjoy at a 26 percent pick rate then ko at a 26 percent pick rate then sky at a 38 percent pick rate so first off let's actually talk about killjoy who has a 43 percent pick rate on haven decent like a 70 percent pick rate on ascent which is huge almost nothing on icebox almost nothing on breeze nothing on split bind or fracture just a little bit of pick rate here and there about average 10 percent now killjoy used to be the go-to sentinel and if you haven't realized yet you notice that all three of the sentinels cypher sage and killjoy have very little pick rate and you might be wondering why that is well the first reason is that astra takes a lot of that power level we're actually seeing a lot of compositions that are running both astra and viper where the utility of these characters combined plus the smoking aspects kind of create something like 1.5 of a controller and a whole goddamn sentinel which is just actually ridiculous but it's just the way it is and then there's another sentinel that we haven't talked about yet aka chamber who is taking up a ton of 
the Sentinel pick rate. And we'll talk about him more in a second. But before we do, let's talk about two initiators that have a decent pick rate in KO and freaking Sky. So it's kind of actually interesting where I think the initiator role is the most balanced in the entire game of Valorant, where specifically Sova, KO, and Sky see almost no play on Fracture, where her freaking Breach is played the maxed out percentage wise. And then if we look here, we see that Icebox sees no play for the initiator category for anyone but Sova. But in a similar flip-flop where Sova doesn't see any play on split, then, you know, KO and Sky see quite a bit of play on split. So it's kind of interesting how they're sharing a lot of pick rate. Of course, Sova is far and away the most picked initiator and it's not even close, but he's not completely drowning out the other characters. And uh, we see KO and Sky a decent part of the meta, especially when we think about Haven and Ascent. There's like a mixture of these characters on those. There's about 50-50 for both on Breeze. And for Sky in particular, she's seeing a lot of play on Split and Bind as well. One thing to note is that KO's pick rate increase has come of what seems like a response to the utility heavy meta that is centered around Astra. Specifically the fact that if a KO gets to nab an Astra, you can actually start the rush incredibly aggressively. He can popple, take space, and he still has the ability to take sidelines with his flashes from operators on big maps like Ascent and Breeze. Just give him a lot of flexibility. And I do think that he's a really underrated pick for both ranked and pro play alike. Now let's actually talk about the initiator chamber with almost a 50% pick rate. And he sees play on every map, only about 25% pick rate on Haven and Ascent. But for Icebox, it's almost 70, Breeze is 80, Split is 50, Bind is 40, and Fracture is 60, approximately. This character sees a lot of goddamn play, even in the pro meta. And it's really interesting how he's taken so much pick rate away from some of the other Sentinel options. Instead of utilizing utility to slow down pushes, you're effectively getting a lot of chances to get pickoffs on this character. Not only are you the most effective character in that pistol round, but later in the game, you get a lot of eco value with your pistol and, of course, the operator that you just get to whip out. And in addition, this character can just cover a lot of ground. You can have your teleport set up to where you can hold multiple areas. You get to actually potentially play for a pick in one area. And if you get a pick, you get to slow down the push. If you don't, you get to teleport away and you have another opportunity to get another pick. So while initially a lot of people thought that this character would only be good in ranked play and not pro play, it turns out that when you combine the proper amount of mechanical skill with a character that really has the capability to just dictate the flow of a game and dictate the flow of economy you get a character that is very powerful for pro play and i think he's actually one of the best characters to pick if you want to climb in ranked but i definitely know a lot of sentinel players that are salty that duelists just lock chamber 24 7 but let's talk about the two characters we've mentioned many times, we got to talk about Astra and Viper. So basically, it's it's like this. So Haven and Ascent is all Astra, no Viper. Icebox and Breeze is all Viper, no Astra. And then for Split, Bind, and Fracture, it's both of them a lot. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. They have some maps that are just far and away, only one and only the other. And then they have maps that they just are both played because why the hell not? Now to easily understand why these characters are played on which map, we already talked about Icebox and Breeze having really open lines of sight so that one single target smoke from Astra is not enough, plus the choke points are not clustered enough for you to get a ton of utility value off of Astra's abilities, so that's why she's not played in addition to Viper. And then we think about maps like, let's say Haven for instance, where Viper doesn't see any play. You have very small choke points for one, where Astra is just far and away one of the best characters you can have but you also have you know peak angles and entrances on the site that are very small as well easily block offable by just a simple astra smoke you don't need to split entire sites and that actually could be a liability if i'm being honest when we're talking about like a really cramped site like freaking a site so 
The reason I break this down, even though if you want to, you could play both of these characters on every map, right? If you want to be a Viper one trick, you could be a Viper one trick in ranked, but you need to understand why the character is a fair bit weaker on the maps that they see no play in. They're not seeing no play on these maps for no reason. And it's really important that if you are going to try to play one of these characters on the maps that they are not best utilized for, how can you play the character to overcome your weakness? Or maybe it would be best for you to learn how to flex to the characters. Specifically, I think that you could one trick Astro, but on Icebox and Breeze, to me, that would be the best controller duo characters that you could learn. But I know it's going to be up to your personal preference, of course. Now, let's talk about the maps where both of them are played, like maps like Split and Bind and Fracture. These maps have a combination of closed corridors and really cramped maps and map geometry but also some open space as well where you can get more value out of the wall so think about a map like split where there are of course tight choke points we got to think about b site we got to think about mid there's a lot of tight choke points where you can get a ton of utility value out of astra and of course not just that you can also defensively smoke off mid you could smoke off Heaven Targeted or CT Targeted on A site. So there's a lot of individual value you can get out of her. But also, Viper can completely cut off the Heavens on both A and B with the proper lineup. She can play post-plant really well. She can smoke mid. So you got to think about how both these characters are really great on that map. So ultimately, what I'm trying to portray to you is that it's not just about knowing what character to just play and just think, oh, I'm playing this map. Let's just play this character. You need to think about why your character is good on what map, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and how can you utilize the strengths and kind of overcome the weaknesses with every character, and then just understanding why your character is strong. What makes them strong? How do you play towards that? And I think it's gonna help you a lot just improve more as a player. Now, of course, we gotta talk about the top two, the big dogs, Sova and Jet. These are the two characters that have been at top of the meta for quite some time, and they're still top of the meta. I would argue that it's actually, you know, the four, the Viper, Astra, Jet, and Sova. But specifically, if we look at Haven, Ascent, Icebox, and Breeze, Sova is basically picked almost 100% if you just combine those maps. And Jet has picked an average of 90% on those same maps. So these characters kind of go hand in hand on these maps and they're completely dominant on these maps. Jet is absolutely needed, especially in the slow Astra meta where she's one of those characters that can punish an Astra on point where an Astra is just, you know, hold up with the freaking stars and she can suck and she can smoke and she can stall the point relentlessly. But the jet being able to smoke and dash on point just creates a ton of space for the team. And I think that in a world without jet, I think that uh, freaking Astra would go absolutely ballistic. I'm not saying that jet doesn't need a nerf as well. I am saying that in the current utility heavy meta, jet is one of those characters that can help break it open slightly where if there was no character that was like that, I don't even want to know how fucking slow and dirtily this goddamn meta would be. But uh, I do expect some sort of Astra nerfs before too long down the pipeline. Now, I do want to talk briefly about Sova. Sova's a really weird case because I do think that he's a character that takes a lot of skill and he actually contributes to, I think, decent play patterns and decent metas. And I think he's actually a character that a lot of people wouldn't mind just being the top of the meta. I do think that he's been at the top of the meta for a very, very long time. And I don't think it would really hurt his pick rate that much if you just made a couple of his abilities cost more. But I'm not entirely sure if it's necessary. I kind of want to pass the question on to you. How do you feel about Sova being dominant for so long? Do you think it's time that another character takes that reign? Would you like to see like a complete shift where a lot of the characters that don't see play right now all of a sudden are meta and a lot of the characters that are meta just see no play or do you just want to move around specific characters i want to know your opinion about all that down below i don't think i need to talk that much about how sofa's freaking cracked out of his mind besides split and fracture he sees like no play on those two maps but uh he says 87 percent fine but anyways if you want to master any of these characters we have in that auto news tips and tricks breakdowns and so much more on the game leap website that you actually have to go check out right now if you really want to climb do yourself a favor and don't miss out right now down below